and the competitive world of music, creating a global hit requires more than just a catchy melody. Today, we're diving deep into the marketing genius behind Diamond Platinum's song Komasava. It has taken the world by storm through a masterful combination of strategic planning, social media savvy, and cultural inclusivity. Let's break it down. Buckle up. This is the no BS version. The song was released on May 2nd, 2024, and features South African stars Khalil Harrison and Sihle. It's sitting on 3.5 million streams on Spotify, thereabouts. The visualizer is on 4.7 million views on YouTube, and the remix music video with Jason Derulo is on 8 million views, and it hasn't been out for two weeks even. These impressive numbers tell only part of the story. To truly understand the phenomenon of Komasava, we need to unravel the intricate web of marketing strategies that propelled it to international stardom. From the very beginning, Diamond Platinums had a clear vision for Komasava. The choice to collaborate with South African artists Kalu Harrison and Sihle, like I mentioned, was strategic, immediately giving the song that Pan-African appeal. That being said though, TZ artists and Diamond in particular, to be honest, have always done very well to work with South African producers and vocalists when it comes to Ama Piano, which is a great way of uh, giving flowers to the originators. Even back in the day when, you know, South Africans were complaining that, ah, you can't be making versions of Ama Piano without us, the originators. TZ was already collaborating with South African acts. It has always helped retain the authenticity of the genre too. So, I give them flowers for that, props for sure. This cross-border collaboration set the stage for what would become a global sensation. Also, bearing in mind that Khalil Harrison was coming off the back of the hit Dali with Kamompela, and Sihle was off the back of the hit Asambe, which is still a hit even. Considering those factors, this collab by Diamond Platinums was very strategic. But Diamond didn't stop at creating a great song. He understood that in today's digital age, the way a song is promoted is just as crucial as its quality. This is where the Koma Sava dance challenge comes into play. I traced back the first Koma Sava dance challenge video on his TikTok to May 2nd and on his Instagram to May 3rd, 2024. The timing here is crucial. Diamond launched the challenge immediately upon the song's release, creating instant engagement with his audience. And interestingly, what he did is he didn't actually cross-post the same video on the different platforms at that point. He actually had a different video on TikTok compared to the one on um, Instagram. And then he eventually cross-posted later on. The genius of the Komasava dance challenge lies in its simplicity and accessibility. Anyone, and I mean anyone, regardless of dance skills or social status, could participate. It is the easiest dance challenge you can think of. This inclusivity was key to the challenge's viral spread. By inviting fans to create their own content, Diamond effectively turned his audience into a marketing army. That was his vehicle, his marketing vehicle, spreading Komasava far and wide. And you'd think, okay, he's done a good job. But Diamond's promotion didn't stop there. Since the launch, no less than 20 videos on his personal TikTok promoting Komasava and close to 100, if not more, on his Instagram. This is relentless promo relentless promo that showcases Diamond's unwavering commitment to the success of the song. By maintaining a constant presence on social media, he kept Komasava at the forefront of public consciousness, ensuring its momentum never waned. Think about it this way too, he's got 6.5 million followers on TikTok. He is leveraging and milking that support, and he had more fuel to add to that fire. The power of celebrity endorsement played a crucial role in amplifying Komasava's reach. Many celebrities have been seen doing the challenge or playing the song, including Sweli, Paul Pogba, Chris Brown, Inos B, Emmanuel Adebayo, Jux, Loco from Cameroon, and DJ Fafan. The list goes on. It continues. And it also includes countless influencers and TikTok stars such as Chad Jones as well. It's impossible to miss the virality. 
each of these high profile participants brought their own um, massive followings to the Koma Sava phenomenon, creating a snowball effect uh, of engagement and exposure. Come to think of it, I think Clay Thompson also did the Koma Sava dance challenge recently. The involvement of Jason Derulo in particular marked a significant milestone in the song's journey. The remix featuring Jason Derulo was a strategic move to refresh interest and tap into new markets, particularly the US. Uh, and this collaboration not only gave Koma Sava a second wind, but also lent it additional celebrity in the international music scene. Typically, when a song becomes successful to a certain level, and I don't, I don't think Koma Sava has necessarily reached that, but um, it's getting there and it could get there. You start finding many remixes of that song where it might be like hey we're gonna do a um south american remix and we're gonna do a european remix a u.s remix whatever the case may be so that could still happen one of the most striking aspects of Koma Sava's success is its cultural and linguistic inclusivity. By incorporating multiple languages such as french and this is the title really i know he spells it <laughs> Uh, Koma Sava, uh, and uh, but but you know, there's the French way of actually saying it and spelling it. Uh, but he also included Swahili, uh, Zulu in there as well, so it's a melting pot of languages. And because of that, he created a truly global track that resonates across cultural borders. This approach not only broadened the song's appeal but aligned perfectly with its message of unity and celebration. The visual elements of Koma Sava deserve special mention. The official remix music video with Jason Derulo having been recently released now plays a crucial role for the song's promotion. Firstly, when you go through the video, you realize like there's shots of different places like uh, Johannesburg and I think there's some of Paris or and just different places uh, uh, around the world. You kind of figure out as you go through it. So it makes it, it gives it this feeling of like, hey, this is everybody's song, which I think is really cool. Diamond's marketing strategy also extended to his use of multiple platforms. By ensuring Koma Sava had a strong presence across various social media and streaming services, he maximized the song's exposure and engagement opportunities. This multi-platform approach allowed Koma Sava to reach different demographics and age groups contributing to its widespread appeal. And I think this is something that a lot of artists can learn from because you realize like, many artists they only distribute to certain platforms and they don't exist on maybe one social media over the other diamond is everywhere bro everywhere so for me the success of koma sava raises an important question why do some songs need such a concerted marketing effort to realize their true potential and in today's saturated music market, even great songs can get lost in the noise because there's so much competition out there. The sheer volume of music being released daily means that artists must go above and beyond to capture and maintain audience attention. Diamond Platinums understood this challenge and rose to meet it. His approach to promoting Koma Sava demonstrates a deep understanding of modern music consumption habits in an era where social media drives trends and viral content, that can make or break a song. And Diamond's strategy was perfectly calibrated to succeed. Now, moreover, the Koma Sava phenomenon illustrates the challenging role of the artist in the digital age. Gone are the days when musicians were simply big enough to just release music and let record labels handle the rest. Uh, that relationship is in tricky waters right now anyway even with warner music backing diamond for distribution many of the best musicians on the continent and outside right now like diamond are also savvy marketers in their own right content creators and community managers the relentless promotion the dance challenge the celebrity and influencer endorsements all of these elements work together to create this comprehensive marketing campaign that goes far beyond traditional music promotion. 
this level of effort is increasingly necessary in a world where attention is the most valuable currency. And it's crazy to think about it because diamond is huge. You get smaller artists that have done very little in the industry they only maybe send out one tweet and just say oh listen to my music and then after a week they're like ah this didn't work this guy's been promoting koma Savar for like two three months now relentlessly ultimately the global success of koma Savar is a masterclass in modern music marketing diamond platinum strategic vision combined with his willingness to engage directly and consistently with his audience turned a great song into a phenomenon from the initial release strategy to the ongoing promotion and celebrity involvement, every aspect of Koma Safar as a campaign was carefully orchestrated to maximize its impact and go far and wide. As we watch Koma Safar continue to dominate the charts and social media feeds, we're witnessing the future of music marketing unfold before our eyes and Diamond Platinum's has a great template for it. When he does this, Many times it works out really well and sometimes it doesn't, but you know, he has this template and this formula and he set a new standard showing that in today's music industry, creating a hit requires more than just musical talent. It really demands innovation strategy and an unwavering commitment to connecting with the audiences across the globe. So you tell me, what do you think of the Koma Savar Dance Challenge? And do you think this song is going to continue becoming bigger and bigger in 2024? Or what's the deal? And in your opinion, what has made it such a big song to begin with? Let me know in the comments below. And let's have a healthy discussion around it. Otherwise, that's it for me. My name is M. Geomoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Dende. Ooh, you are the danger